All right. After a very worrisome uh, January, stocks were bounding in February and March to end the quarter on an up note. Uh, yet, taking that news along with improving jobs numbers uh, and some other pickup in retail sales activity, this $10 billion plus in orders for car sight unseen that folks went get their Tesla hands on for the year, year and a half, you would think now is not the time to be talking about a massive recession. But Donald Trump is. And sending out the warning, perplexing a lot of economists. It's never a bad idea to perplex them, by the way. Uh, and a lot of market watchers. Garrett Kalpam says that Donald Trump is right about this, that something bad is on the horizon. Mark Matson says no one can predict the future. To say it's dire otherwise is, is, is rather extreme. Uh, so, Gary, Donald Trump is saying essentially what you're saying. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Uh, what's wrong with that? Uh, Neil, after eight or nine years of 0% interest rates, 15 to 20 trillion dollars of printed money, now negative rates, countries buying up their stock and bond markets. What do we have for it? Massive debt explosions around the globe, and here, supposedly the same country in the world, we're at 1% GDP in predictions for this quarter, less than 1%. I don't think it's a reach to think that we could be on the precipice. Uh, you, one never knows, but with all that easy money, that's all we have for it. I think there could be a lot of trouble lying ahead. But you know, Mark, that could also be waiting for Godot. Eventually, like a broken clock, the naysayer is going to be right, just as in the middle of bad things, the, the, the optimists will be right. Uh, so, what, what, what is the issue you have with what Trump is saying now? Well, I think the issue that I have with it is it makes investors focus on the wrong things. They shouldn't be focused on the next 20 minutes or the next 20 months. They should be focused on the next 20 years. And over the last 30 years, with years. two massive recessions. No, 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 I don't have time for that. Even, We're in listen, the middle. Neil, no, First listen, of all, I want to just listen, get through the show. If, we can talk Neil, about 20, listen, 20 minutes even left. Even if you're 60, so, even if... Go Wait a minute, Neil. Even if you're 65 today, chances are you're going to have another 20 to 30 years left. So you better mm -hmm. be thinking about inflation, and you better be thinking about the long term. And equity well, he's saying massive recession because these chickens are coming home to roost. Now, having said that, and Gary, here's what I'll raise with you. Oh, there are a lot of companies that have been guiding their consensus estimates a little lower. There are, uh, there's a prediction here that this quarter that we just finished will be a down quarter. In other words, an earnings contraction, the fourth quarter in a row. So that where there's smoke, there's generally potential selling fire. But is he getting way ahead of himself? Uh, look, here, here's the issue. Markets are pretty smart in the long run. I know we've had a rally here, but very simply, if earnings are coming down and markets are going up, valuations are going higher, and eventually markets are going to come down. I have had this thought process that everything's A-OK -okay as long as markets cooperate. That's why I think over the last eight weeks you've had all these uh, countries easing monetary policy even more to get markets back up again. I'm worried that if the next time down, that's when all the uh, things are going to come home to roost. And I think it's just something that has to be watched very, very closely. And Neil, you said it best. Earnings are going down four quarters in a row. This is not good news. These are facts and not opinions. All right. So, Mark, give me the bullish case that he missed. Look, the bullish case is all of that is already in the price today. Everybody knows that information. The only thing that's going to change prices going forward are unpredictable and un, uh, uh, unforecastable information and data. And the reality is that historically the next 100 percent movement in the market is always up. So I want well, investors let's say, let's say, not only to own U.S. The markets. Equities, when he talks they about need to be a I understand. When he's talking about a grand recession, he, a big recession, the markets might be a part of that. But this idea that the world can't go on the way it's going on, feeding on debt, and all, now the fact that it has and done so very nicely in the face of all of that is remarkable. But it's getting long in the tooth. I think that's what he's saying, Mark. And do you agree with that aspect of what he's saying? I, I don't, because in the long run, all market drops, even if they're 20 or 50 percent, are always temporary. So everyone knows you should buy things when they're low, not, you know, not when they're high. If the market does go down in the short run, how about this? Neil. Buy more. And don't just own the U.S. Own over 12,000 stocks in 45 different countries. Equities long term are the greatest wealth creation right. tool known to mankind. But no one can predict I, them in I, the next I, 20 I, months. 
I just have to say that big recessions happen because of too much leverage and debt. We now have more leverage and debt than we have in 2008 because nobody ever learns their lessons from the past, and that's where the big worry comes. And I don't know what's going to be the trigger, but it has to be something to watch. And again, I'm dealing with facts here, not opinions. Debt has skyrocketed, and it's something to be uh, on the radar. All right. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both. You argue positions very, very well.